Welcome back, this is Defender Chassis, my name's Scott, and today's project is to create an adjustable lower link for a 77 Chevy Vega. Now this is the lower link for the rear suspension, and the owner of the car would like to have some adjustability, and also you know, the factory mounts are deteriorating, in addition they're rubber and they got a lot of flexibility, and so he would like something a little stiffer. So what we've done is we've purchased some parts from Paul Horton's Welder Series. The guy's out of Canada. He makes these parts in pieces and basically what you can do is create a link uh, just like this and he will sell you these ends which are simply some uh, inch and 5 8 OD tubing. Uh, I believe it's 188 thousandths wall thickness and uh, those are simply your end pieces. You've got some polyurethane uh, T bushings. Uh, you can buy these other places besides uh, uh, Paul Horton, but uh, they simply press in and then you've got a bushing uh, that then slides inside of those to um, bring you down to the half inch uh, bolt size. And in between, what we've got is he's got a uh, threaded stem that, um, you know, if you guy wanted to, I think you could make these out of a uh, three quarter inch bolt and uh, add a jam nut, simply uh, you know, turn the, the head on a lathe and, and uh, cope, cope the end out and uh, you could uh, fabricate these self, yourself if, you'd, uh, if you care to. Now the tube is um, one inch OD, yeah one inch OD and I believe it is also 188 thousandths wall thickness. And he direct threads one end for the three quarter 16 thread and then he sells these in different lengths and he goes ahead and copes the one end for you um, and, and if you were putting new front mounts in um, you know you could fabricate these to the length that you buy you know from Paul Horton uh, what we're going to do though is uh, we're going to actually cut and cope this ourselves now I'm showing you the second length because the fabrication of the first link, although not a failure, uh, had some issues. What I did was, you can see here on the table there are four tabs, four chassis tabs that I had on hand. And I bolted them to this factory link and then tacked them to the table. So then when you pull this link out, now we've got a replication of the exact center to center distance. So what we did was, we put the bushings in, in these ends and bolted them into these, in between these tabs, and then fit the tube to, um, uh, to, to weld it up. Now the problem with that is that you can't tack from the bottom unless you flip the, the, the assembly. And in addition with these polyurethane bushings in here, uh, tacking created um, some damage. And although it didn't damage these beyond use, in fact, the damage is, is pretty minimal, but it did create a lot of smoke and uh, an unfavorable condition to, uh, to try to you know, start the, uh, the weld up of this. And so I rethought the whole situation and came to the conclusion that a fixture like this would be handy if we were doing, say, you know, dozens or hundreds of these at a time. If we were going to do that, if we were going to fabricate these and, 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 and sell them, what we would do is we would actually make a jig, not use the top of the welding table, but make, make a jig, you know, find a piece of plate and, and weld these, these tabs to it uh, permanently. And then rather than using the polyurethane bushings, we would probably create, like say, something that uh, is going to be resistant to the heat, like a, uh, an aluminum bushing or something of that nature to fixture this thing up. Then um, what we would, uh, you know, would eliminate that problem with the, the heat. It came to me after, after I created this, that this is really a lot of work to make, to make two lengths. The fact is you've got um, threads on this stem that allow you with simply uh, a half of a turn to adjust the length of this in one thirty second or around uh, 032, 32 thousandths of an inch increments. And that's not going to make or break this thing. So it really is not necessary to create a jig like this unless it's going to save you time. And the fact is it took more time to create this than what I'm going to save making just two of these links. So what we're going to do on the second link is we're going to use the, um, the first link that we created 
and we're going to clamp the the ends down and then we will fit the new tube cut it and cope it and tack it in place while these are clamped and then we can get to both sides to tack it and in addition we'll just unclamp it and then weld it on the bench so easy peasy uh, really the way to go for for a small number of number of units the only other thing that i want to go go over is the how much threads the other question that comes up when you build something like this is how do you uh, create you know how do you set this end so that you uh, have the appropriate number of threads and as a rule of thumb these are three quarters of an inch in diameter you want a minimum of three quarters of an inch of thread engagement to attain full strength. If anything less than that, the threads will actually pull out of the end of the tube. Now, some of this depends upon the strength of, of uh, this threaded stem compared to the, the strength of the uh, tube, but uh, in general, you will be safe if you get a minimum of three quarters of an inch or whatever the diameter is, that's how much thread engagement that you want. Now, what that means is you now have some additional thread and so what we're going to do is we're going to land we're, we're, we're going to split the difference on that so that we've got room to adjust these lengths longer or shorter and which is really what the what the owner is looking for now he's telling me that he's probably going to go shorter um, but at the same time we want to give him the ability to go both directions an equal amount so if we measure this if we run the jam nut all the way to the top and then we measure, we've got an inch and five eighths of thread. Now we know we want three quarters of an inch of that for uh, thread engagement at a minimum. So we're gonna take three quarters of an inch off of that and we're gonna end up with seven eighths of an inch. So we've got seven eighths of an inch of uh, adjustment for and aft. So we're gonna split that so we can shorten it as much as we can, we can lengthen it. So, we split that in half, seven eighths is seven sixteenths of an inch. Therefore, we want to thread the tube on three quarters of an inch and then another seven sixteenths of an inch. Or what we're gonna do is we're actually going to run this jam nut down seven sixteenths of an inch and then we can thread the tube up to it. What I've done is I've put a mark on the nut and a mark on the, uh, the stem. And uh, we're lucky in this case because the, uh, this is a uh, three quarter, 16 threads per inch. So simply seven sixteenths of an inch would be just turning this nut seven times on the stem. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, if we thread this tube up to that jam nut, then we'll be in the proper position. Now this end is adjusted correctly. And what we'll do is clamp these ends down and then fit up to here, mark this end, cut it, cope it, dress the welds, prepare the ends to be welded, and uh, tack it up. So, hey, that's, uh, that's all the talking I need to do. We'll be back at the end to uh, give you a little closer shot of the final product. Let's get it. Mm -hmm.